what's up guys happy 2019 the vlog is back so i'm going to start off the year with providing the most value as possible i'm just going to tell you right off the bat how i edit my photos from the techniques i use the apps and programs i use to the process this is what this video is going to be about so before i get into that i gotta take a photo first So before you proceed, you should know. So I shoot in RAW, R-A-W. If you don't already shoot in RAW, I highly suggest you do because it makes your editing process a lot more versatile, a lot more convenient for you. And if you shoot in JPEG, what's really happening is it's a raw image being compressed into JPEG. So it's compressing the quality, it's compressing the size, it's compressing your options, really. There are three things you need. Photoshop. This is where I do all my foundational edits, light levels, white balance, sharpness, things of that nature. Then I upload onto my phone and Visco app, VSEO. This is where I pick filters, this is where I crop my photos for Instagram. And then maybe I'll use <laughs> Snapseed. I don't always use this, but there's really useful tools on this app. If you don't have Photoshop, you can use Snapseed, but I'll elaborate more on that later. So I just want to preface by saying that this breakdown I'm about to talk about is kind of like a quicker version because it really takes me a lot of time to make all these decisions in editing, but I don't have enough time to put that into this video. It's just going to take way too long. With that said, first step, here we go. I'm going to upload my photo on Photoshop, edit it in RAW. So if you don't already edit in RAW, you're going to see exactly why it's so versatile and it's so convenient. Let's go. So here's my photo that I just took earlier in my backyard. So if you don't edit in RAW, take a look at the format. You have all of your options here. White balance, exposure, contrast, highlight, shadows, clarity, saturation, uh, sharpness, uh, distortion, vignetting, grain. You have a lot of options here, all in one place. That's where the convenience kicks in. My first goal when I upload a photo is I want it to look like it looks like in real life for two reasons. One, if I don't put a filter on it on Visco or whatever, then it's going to look nice already. And two, I just want it to be at least brighter so that when I do add a filter on top of it, it looks better than if I just put a filter as it is right now. Because usually filters, they add a lot of contrast. They might darken it and change the colors. So you want to edit it so that by the time you do put a filter on, it looks good with that filter. Because a lot of filters like to put contrast and maybe brighten it a little less. Uh, maybe oversaturate. All filters are different. I like to prep it for the filter and then I can edit it further if I have to on the Visco app after I put the filter on. So I actually took the liberty in editing this already. So let me just open it up and then I'll break it down for you. Cool. So this is more or less how it looked like in real life. Maybe a little bit more saturated, but that's what I like to see. So what I did was I saturated the stones and the trees and pretty much everything. And the simple way to do that is by putting the saturation up. But on top of that, I also played around with these individual color saturations and the luminance, actually just the blue. Uh, hue, I don't use too often. Another thing I did was I sharpened it just to make it pop a little bit more. I added uh, some noise reduction and what that does is, let me just zoom in real quick if it will let me. If you just put sharpening you'll see a lot of these grains here that you don't necessarily need all you really need to do is see these lines clearer these lines clearer what luminous does is all these little grains that you know kind of distract your eye 
maybe what luminance does is it kind of just takes away those details while still making it sharp so I do that let me uh, zoom back out what else did I do oh I uh, I brightened up the shadows a little bit which is right here um, I put up the exposure a little bit of clarity oh what I did was I changed the white balance because this was very blue as you can see very bluish reddish and then I added a little bit of yellow on it I might have even put down the tint to the green side when you put it down to the green side these greens show up a lot better but you don't want to put it too much because everything will be green same with if you put it here everything will be too magenta if you put it here everything will be too blue if you put it here you know whatever so on and so forth so you know that's pretty much it I think we're ready to go to the next step which is just the regular Photoshop edit let's open the image alright so now we're editing on the regular Photoshop platform what I want to do next is establish my focal point and emphasize it so what I do next is I've established that this is the focal point or at least the main focal point and I have to find ways to emphasize it so what do I I again I've already edited it so let me show you what uh, it looks like after I edited it so I'm just gonna flip back and forth all right so what did I do here first thing is I brightened up this area so that it creates this contrast where you look straight at it how I did that was I went to dodge I usually expose at about 5% because on the midtones because I don't like going too crazy uh, right off the bat I kinda just like to gradually make it lighter and lighter and then lighter and then see how that goes see how that gets brighter okay another thing I did was I burned same thing midtone 5% everything around it that could be a focal point because of either contrast or it's just too bright whatever reason so what I did was I burned this whole area right here I burned a little bit this area right here and especially this area right here because there's a lot of contrast going on right here with the highlights and the shadows emphasizing your focal point is really about controlling where the contrast is so I'm trying to create as much contrast in this area without making it look fake another thing I did was I I gradually darkened these mountains so this one was the darkest one this one was a little bit lighter a little bit lighter a little bit lighter because another focal point I want is this area right here I want you to be looking at this and then kind of gradually slowly looks towards this way I want to show a lot of depth with these shadows and when you look at the photo you obviously know there's a lot of depth already so another way to show depth is by having gradual shadows with these mountains so kind of just showing that this area right here is a completely different area than here than here than here than here it's just it's just so far away so that's pretty much it establish a focal point emphasize it darken everything around it that creates a contrast and show depth that's pretty much all they did here on to the next thing all right so here's visco i've already uploaded my photo that i just edited here it is Oh, my phone's so slow. Okay, so this one's really simple. Pick a filter if it ever loads. I like to use A6. I like to use KK1. I like to use M5. Sometimes NC. Uh, what else? Those are my favorite ones. But let's just use A6 for now. All right, so what do we have here? What I like to do is I put a little bit of sharpness. I know I already did that on for, on raw, but I like to add a little bit more just because it's going to be so small now. Um, I like to play around with the exposure. I don't, I don't really know what I want until I do it. Sometimes I like getting it really dark like this. I play around with the exposure and then afterwards I'll go to shadows and then I'll 
higher the levels so that you can see more in um, in the darker areas. <laughs> Exposed. Um, and then after I play around with the shadows, I'll contrast it so that that nice dark contrast that I had earlier before I played around with the shadows comes back, but you still see the dark areas. So, I mean, not to say that this is what I would post, but this is looking pretty good so far. Sometimes I'll play around with the white balance. Let's check that out. Come on. Uh, I think it was okay already. Nah. Mm, oh yeah, vignette for sure. Yeah, I like to put the vignette there. Okay, so right now, this is gonna be something I'm gonna talk about in Snapseed. Right now, as you can see, my focal point, it's getting a little bit darker because it's kind of close to the bottom. Watch what I do on Snapseed after this. Lastly, I will crop it four or five for Instagram. Notice that this square on the bottom left or not the square. Notice that the intersection at the at the bottom left is pretty much where my focal point is. And that line is aligned with that whole mountain. Cropping is really important because that is how you get it within your three by three rule of thirds grid. Done. And then what I'll do after this is I'll save it. Shit. So what I'll do is I'll save it onto my phone and then I'll upload on Snapseed. All right, here's Snapseed. All right, I'm gonna open my latest image, which is the mountain or canyon. This is gonna be really quick. I mentioned earlier how the vignetting made this area a little bit darker. So this is the cool tool that Snapseed has. Go under Tools, Selective, and basically point your finger anywhere so let's say I put it there. Whoa, where'd it go? Okay, so I can move it around and anything, any color or shade that matches where I just pointed gets affected. So the B means brightness. So that darkness that I just created from vignetting on Visco, I just voided it out here on Snapseed by isolating it. C is contrast. Uh, I don't know if it needs it much contrast. That, that was kind of cool. Saturation, structure. Well, structure can be kind of cool sometimes. I don't know. It's kind of like HDR. It's kind of like sharpening an HDR at the same time. I don't I really, I don't really know what it means. I don't use it too often, but let's just save that. So before, after. So I just highlighted my focal point even more. Go back to tools. The only other thing that I use on a you know, regular basis is healing, where the band-aids are. So healing, this is kind of... So the healing tool is basically the same thing as it is in Photoshop, where you can just kind of, I don't know. If you took a portrait of someone, and let's say one of these little things is a pimple. Let's just take that out. Boom, pimple gun. <laughs> I wouldn't really use it too much in landscape, but there are situations where it might work out. I'll, I'll save that. So that's pretty much it. The reason I like Snapseed is because I can isolate these areas, like I said earlier, very easily. And I'll, easier than Photoshop. Some, uh, sometimes I'll just do this just on Snapseed and then f fucking screw Photoshop because it's just so easy, especially when you're on your phone and you're just on the subway, edit, you can just edit so many photos and they're so easy to do. Okay, I'm getting carried away here. You get my point. Snapseed is sick. So that's pretty much my editing process from taking the photo to Photoshop Raw, to Photoshop, to Visco, to maybe Snapseed. Probably Snapseed. That's it guys, that's the process. Um, I hope you got some value out of it. Let me know what you think. Uh, should I use Photoshop CC? Should I use uh, Lightroom? Should I use a different app? 
whatever. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. I'm A12T. Till next time.